Hi guys, Jurassic Junkie here, and I'm not deaf! Welcome to the Friday Night Rant. So yes, it's been a month now, I've missed three Friday Night Rants in a row, and for good reason. Um, I said originally I was going to have Central Eaton installed, which is now installed, which went through absolutely fine but to do it we had to disturb the bathroom and then was like why don't we just do the bathroom and that was probably a bad idea because well it's a good idea we get in a brand new bathroom but we had to knock down walls and outside here is a complete building site down below I've got no carpet anymore and it's just dust everywhere I don't like even being in the office at the moment because it's just it's horrible but it doesn't matter because luckily enough I spent the last few days being sick and um, I've got rid of that bug now, and I gave it my builder. <laughs> so he is now off at the moment sick, and gave me a free day. So with that free day, I shall film, and it's the best time to film because Sony's just on its conference. But before we move on, let's go with a Friday night little tipple. I'm going to go with an Atkins diet drink. Yay! Which I know is not the manliest manly things, but I am on a diet. But it's just a manly diet because my diet consists of lots and lots and lots of bacon i just eat nothing but bacon now and lose weight from it i've lost a stone already from just eating bacon so that's absolutely awesome but i'm going to enjoy my atkins coffee milkshake which to be fair i've been drinking these chocolate ones and the bloody lover when you can't eat chocolate and you're on a diet and you get like a chocolate shake and you know it's good for you it's absolutely awesome lovely I don't know how long this rant's actually going to go on for, to be fair, because I've got a month's worth of stuff I want to cram in, and I've just chucked a load of stuff out that I wanted to talk about. I've been writing down for the last three weeks. I thought that it's not worth it, or it's not relevant now because it's three weeks ago. So let's just talk about the E3 conference, which is actually known as the Sony meeting. Where the f E3 just come from? I don't know. But yes, Sony decided they was going to make a little mini E3 kind of expo of their own console. We all knew it was going to be the PlayStation 4. It was the PlayStation 4. And the first thing is, I'm just glad it is called the PlayStation 4 because there's the rumour that the 4 in Japanese or whatever it is is actually a bad word. Therefore, it shouldn't actually be called number 4. And um, it's tis called 4, which is good because I would have ate for it to go 1, 2, 3 or Briss. It, it would have annoyed me. So I'm glad it's called number 4. But what I'm going to do is going to start off by telling you what I hated about it and then what I, I love. So we, we finish it on a high note instead of a low note. First thing I actually hated about it at all was we didn't get to see the frigging PlayStation 4. It was the PlayStation 4 conference without a PlayStation 4, which was very annoying. And I know they're still dialing it in. And there's even just this morning came out saying that PlayStation have said they've still not finalised the design. Which I still think is a bit of a lie because the thing is, if this is going to be coming out at Christmas, they're going to have to be coming close to actually manufacturing this quite soon and making millions and millions of units and to be fair I would have thought they would have at least got down to the final designs or I, I think they've made the design and they just didn't show it is because it wasn't in physical form yet but either way I'm annoyed that we didn't get to see it. The other thing that annoyed me about the entire conference was they were showing this beautiful graphics of what the PlayStation 4 can do but yet we got to enjoy it through the resolution of a calculator, which was amazing. So it was really annoying watching that conference. I know it kept on buffering because you had like half a million people streaming at the same time. But it was just, it was annoying that you couldn't see the quality of it. And at one point I was going to give up on the conference and thought, I'll just watch it all again tomorrow in 1080 so I can properly enjoy it. But you know, it's one of them ones where you go, I'm going to shut this down in a minute, but you can't because there's new information and tech being shown off. One of the other things that annoy me, and this isn't PlayStation's fault, this is sadly where we're all going, but for some reason the world thinks we all need to be intertwined to Facebook. Everything needs to be, all right, we can share this and we can share that. No, I don't want everything to share. I don't want my Facebook friends to know that I've just got the highest score in this. I don't give a shit. If I want to tell them, I'll go on and say, I just got the highest score in this game. So that's annoying with them starting to try and intertwine everything together. And the other thing that really annoyed me about the entire conference was just, you have, you always have that thing which to kind of show off and the, the, I've heard people saying it when obviously when the Kinect first came out and he had the picture of that guy and he had the skateboard and it scanned the skateboard then that skateboard scanning was in the game and that never materialised and it feels very much like when they shown you that move thing where they made that tree and all that lot, that's not going to materialise and even if it does like hell I care if it does because that's one of the things which I just looked at and went yeah it's kind of cool doing that but like I care about doing that I'll do what you probably done you spent he said oh we, we did this and we spent the first few hours just creating things yeah what did you do the next few hours nothing because you created a few things and that was it and I just think that's a gimmick and it's just pointless and then they turn the people into some rock band kind of thing and I was just like so you've made these people but yet 
somehow you're going to be able to control the limbs. How do you determine the limbs and the skeleton just by doing that? But while doing that, that's also going to be controlling the band. And so it's going to be like rock band where you tap things, but yet yeah, that will know there's a joint there. And it's as easy as just going that apparently and just painting these characters. And like, no, I think there's a lot more to it than just doing that and a person's created. So all that to me, I just looked at it and went, that's all I'm not bothered. And the other thing which I wasn't a big fan of was the controller. Um, just because it, to me, it kind of looks like a third party controller. Like, I've always moaned about the PlayStation controllers, but they look like PlayStation controllers. They're quite sleek, the sex set. I just, hands wise, I can't get on with it, but they look nice. Whereas this didn't look like an official PlayStation controller, it just looked like some third party kind of thing. And also, the triggers, I know where you got the bumper buttons on the PlayStation and Xbox has got triggers. In fact, a lot of people got triggers. I'm a big fan of a trigger. And it looks like that little button's got a bit bigger, but it's still not trigger size. I would have liked them to actually bin triggers. So before I go on any more, there's probably a lot of PlayStation fans now just going, STOP HATING ON IT! And it's not all bad. I just wanted to get the bad out of the way so we can talk about the good. Now, one thing I did like is the controller, <laughs> which is another thing to say, but one thing I like about it, it looks like it's gained a bit of weight. The old girls put some weight on, and that's good because, to me, the PlayStation 1 controller was absolutely awesome because I was a kid and I had kid hands, and that's one of the reasons I never liked the controller. Like The Xbox just feels like a, a proper man controller. Like, it fits in my hand, and I, I don't feel like I'm doing that round it, whereas when I'm playing on the PlayStation three control it feels like I'm a raptor and I'm kind of just holding it it's I'm not a fan of it so to add a bit more weight it looks a bit a bigger of a controller I'm happy about the other thing I actually like about the controller is the simple fact is it's obviously got the touchpad on the screen now I like the idea it's just a touchpad and it's not obviously like a screen that you can look at things and touch them like the Wii U controller is because the thing I didn't like so much about the Wii U controller is when I was playing Rayman I was watching it playing it and it's obviously on the screen and then it instantly went down to that screen and I had to look down and sometimes I was confused which screen I was looking at and it that disconnects me from the game doing all this crap and I like the idea that the PlayStation controller won't do that because I think if they would have put like an LCD screen or something like that in there then they would have felt like there was obliged to push to, to justify it being there you know what I mean and then you would have been playing games you'd have been on Uncharted 4 or something you'd be like right no look down at your screen all right then and it would have been annoying so just to have a touchpad that I can obviously do and perhaps just swipe my finger across here and there I like because it feels like they're not forcing an unneeded piece of technology down even though you probably don't need the touch thing it's there and it can be utilised so we'll see how that all turns out but I'm glad it wasn't an LCD screen the next thing I want to talk about is obviously the graphics from what I've seen out of the things they looked absolutely amazing the weird thing was when they came out and says right here is our first game and it was that weird robot that kind of fell to pieces and came back actually looked like one of the worst things that could have shown off because everything else they showed after then looked amazing graphics so it's one of them weird things that you go welcome to the next generation here is this generation's graphics you're just like that, that made no sense if they dropped it in the middle and just shown not here's a cutesy weird crazy kid game that we've made then it would have been acceptable but to kind of launch on that was straight away made me go oh but then they redeemed themselves by showing some very powerful graphics especially when they're showing you like a million things dropping from the sky and obviously it interacting and collision and all that going off all at the time and the actual machine could handle that I thought it was brilliant so it means we're going to get so much better physics now when we actually shoot a wall hopefully we're going to get bricks that react off each other and stuff like that so all that side of stuff is brilliant the big thing that i really liked and this is what i've said is what i hope both xbox and sony was going to do and sony's done it fingers crossed xbox will do it and it's going to be the share button now i'm not the it's not the button itself I'm so happy about. It's the fact is there's like some form of PVR recording system built into it. Now, I just think that like, there's a billion YouTubers now that just do obviously nothing but gaming. And gaming is a big thing. And obviously capturing gaming is also a big thing. But when I do my capturing, it's all done on this PC. I was going to buy a PVR for one of the actual consoles. But I thought, no, it's pointless really. Because at the end of the day, I know, oh, I hope they're actually going to be in the next gen consoles. And Sony have done it. So I think it's amazing to be able to play a game. And if you did that really great kill or that really funny thing, then you can hit share and just share it, which is awesome. Now, I could be wrong, but I didn't hear them saying anything about this will actually be put onto YouTube. They was talking about intertwining into uh, you streaming all them different services. I didn't hear them say YouTube. It may be there, you know what I mean? So I'm not going to say it's not there. But it would be much more enjoyable to just be able to crop that bit that you want and just chuck it straight to your channel. Also, the ability to be able to live stream as well, which is really, really awesome because at the moment, I, 
I don't do much live streaming, but again, if I do, it's got to be on the PC. There's no way I could do that. So for the PlayStation to be able to have the ability to actually live stream, and also you could just go on and see friends what they're playing and kind of jump in and watch them, and then they have the ability to take over the controller on top of that. I think it's absolutely awesome. The only question I've taken from that is... If I am playing Call of Duty 9462, because obviously that's going to happen, um, when I'm playing that game and my friend doesn't own it, can he then look at it and take over my controller? If so, what stops him from actually saying, do you know what, mate, would you just mind leaving your console on tonight while you watch TV and he could then play through the old game? So where's where's it stop? What's the rules going to be? Because obviously a lot of people are just going to buy a game and let the friends obviously just take over the controller and they'll clock it as well. So does it mean you have to own the game to be able to control the game or is it going to be a set amount of time to hold the controller? So these are obviously small things that I'd like to know about, but nothing bad about it. I think the entire idea of controlling characters and all that like, is absolutely awesome. And the other big thing which I really enjoy is, to me, the biggest pain of the PlayStation is the updates. For some reason, their updates seem to be a lot bigger than the actual Xbox updates. If I get an update on that, it's just for five seconds. It's like, there's an update, bloop, and that's it, it's done. Whereas on the PlayStation, I sit there, it's long, and then, oh, why? When it gets all the way there, I'm like, yeah, oh, crap, I forgot it's a PlayStation, so it has to install it, as well as downloading it, whereas on the Xbox, that bar just means it's doing it all in one. But... They've, they've nailed it. They've got dedicated part just for downloading. They're also saying that when you bring down the actual demos or the uh, the games that it'll actually bring down the playable part first and then do it in order. So when you get so far into a game that you've just purchased, you can start playing it while it's downloading. So all their ideas are amazing. And to me, it sounds like what they've done and what they said they did as well is obviously they've listened because... So many people um, in the actual gaming world have said it's hard to create games with the PlayStation 3 because the way it's engineering and all of it's structured, they said it was a pain. Um, obviously, we've all said that the downloading side of things are annoying and it sounds like they actually have listened and says, what do you want? And they actually picked up on everything and fixed it all. Now, I've said, obviously, the controller's not my cup of tea, but to be fair... There's nothing as much I can moan about, you know what I mean? There's, I can't say, that's a big fault and that's why I'm not buying it. So, I'm quite happy with it. They've, they've listened to what people have got to say. So, I'm going to say something now. It's probably going to annoy a lot of uh, Nintendo fans, but... Sorry, I tend to do it all the time. What it is, is the PlayStation 3 came out and it had its online abilities. And it kind of shot itself in the foot by not giving itself room for the party system. And obviously, sat there without a party all that time. And that's why I've not touched it. Because without having a party system... It's, stupid console to me but that's to me some people don't need a party system so don't flame me but um the point is in all this time they've sat there and they've gone we're going to make it better and they've used their time to go how can we make this better now you can share videos you can record you can jump in people's games you can do all this and this is what happens when somebody spends time and research and creates something that somebody wants now the wii u and when they says we've got the Miiverse, a lot of people say, oh, yes, Miiverse is awesome. But, like, all I know is when you turn this on, you can see what your friends are playing and little Miis run all around. That cannot be years of development spent just to make a bloody Miiverse. That's it. I know it's not as powerful as these next-gen consoles, understandably, so it's not going to be able to do the streaming and stuff like that. But it just feels like Nintendo, when they made the Wii U, kind of just went, yeah, we're going to give it the Nintendo style. And even when people actually said, could we have achievements in Nintendo, they says, no, we don't want to do that. Well, no, 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 no. you got to understand that you should ask us what we want. We'll give you our money and then take that product off you. You don't give us what you think we want. And it does seem like the Miiverse is just like... Just they've kind of gone, we need to go online, so let's make it so when you're playing a game you can write a comment and it doesn't feel like the next generation of actually having some form of online system. It, it, it don't know, it just felt weak when it came out. I wasn't amazed by it. Previous Nintendo people will be because it's just improvement for Nintendo, but to me, this PlayStation has just shown you this is what happens when you spend time and resources and make something someone wants. So sorry Nintendo fans. Now, because it sounds too much like I'm saying nice things about Sony, I'm going to give you a few things now to bash it, knock it back down again. So I've said some time and time again that Sony tend to copy like the Move ideas slash Wii controller, and people can argue, well, this was... Con I'm not here to argue who's copied what, but I feel like Sony haven't got many fresh ideas. They tend to take someone's idea and tweak it, and that's how I think Sony work, and in my opinion. 
And I feel like that if Microsoft, which was originally going to have the conference at E3 and then apparently Sony was going to then say their two cents after, I think the reason that Sony's just gone, we need to do a conference instantly even before our hardware is even ready, is simply to try and take away some of the shine from Microsoft. Because I guess that Microsoft can do a very similar thing with the cloud service and obviously the um, ability to upload videos and all that lot because they've got a cloud service in place anyway Windows 8 is built on a cloud so they've got that infrastructure set there already so all that stuff's going to happen and I think if Microsoft come out and went look what we're going to do we're going to have like a PVR live streaming system and then Sony did it after people might go Sony's kind of copied so I think that Sony's tried to get there first to say look we're not copying and I'm not saying they're copying because two people can have obviously two very similar ideas so I'm not saying Sony's copying it at all I just feel like this conference was like pushed forwards um, quite early just so they can say look this is what we've got and we're the first to show it off so that's how I kind of feel about that could be wrong but the last thing I want to say now this isn't against Sony this is against Sony Microsoft uh, Nintendo's not so bad yeah they are when it was E3 they, they was corporates for it and what it is is if you go to a gig and that gig is one hour long and they played absolutely awesome music. When you leave and you go to the pub and you talk to your friends about that gig, you'll be like, you know what, that was awesome. Because that's what you've got in your mind, that awesome one hour. But if that gig, one hour of awesome music, and then talk to the crowd for three hours after, then when you left, you the last thing in your memory is that limp three hours. And then you kind of go, well, it was all right, that was. It was quite good. Even though that one hour was amazing, you kind of hang on the crap bit towards the end. And I think when people do these conferences, they need to learn to cut the fat out. Now, that conference, I can't remember, was it about two hours, two and a half? I can't remember. It felt a long time because it was late at night for us in the UK. But I felt if they would have cut a lot of that fat out and a lot of that crap, you know, I can't stand it when people go, well, we're going to reinvent. Shut up. Show us what you've got. And that's what I want from a conference. Just give us odd facts and graphics and shiny things and that's what I want to see and if they just went pow and just gave us like 45 minutes of intense stuff I think everyone would have walked away and gone that was amazing but sadly they just fill it in with lots of crap and like I said that's not Sony at all Microsoft oh Jesus Microsoft where you've just got two people pretending to be jocks or kids going fist bump and oh yeah it's just sadly that's just what happens at conferences and it kills me sadly inside and so did that guy who decided to do the little joke who says and now comes on random dude and I'll stand this way and he tapped him on the shoulder and went oh that's what happens when he in rehearsal I died inside and it hurt so much the cringe the pain all in all it was quite a good conference we've taken some information away from it I'd like to see the hardware but the way the actual shear system everything works I'm really impressed so moving on quite quickly now because I know I'm going to take over in a lot of time We've got some Xbox rumours, because obviously Xbox is in the rumour stage now, and Sony is coming out of the rumour stage. And one rumour that's come out is saying that it's going to have to have internet connection all the time. Games will not work if there is no internet connection detected. Now, again, this is a rumour, and this is a rumour that I think is going to just stay as a rumour, and it's not true. Now, I know a lot of games EAs tend to do this quite a lot, saying you've got to have a connection at all times, which I think is ludicrous, because... Sometimes you're not going to have the option for the internet. Like, for instance, my friend James, when he transferred from, I think it was Virgin to Sky, he went without the internet for a month. And if you take the internet off somebody for a month, that's horrible. It's like losing a limb. But then what do you do? If you lost the internet, you go to play on your actual console. And if the console won't work because the internet's not on as well, what the f do you do? You can't watch telly. That's shit. So it, I, I just think it's a stupid decision to say if you haven't got the internet or if you've not got the ability to have it on 24-7, you won't be able to have the functionality of these games. So I think that's a bit of a bull****. So the other thing is that they're actually saying, which they said about Sony as well, and now that's not been said, is second-hand games. And they're saying, again, that's not happening. But to me, if you're not going to have second-hand games, then that means everything you buy will be first-hand and unsellable. So therefore... What's the difference between a physical disc that you buy once and cannot resell on and digital? They are the same, apart from obviously get a disc in your hand, but they'll both work the same. You can't sell them on. So therefore, you would probably end up buying digitally anyway. So therefore, you're buying digital. Why not force the digital age on us instantly? Because if Microsoft turned out and went, you're not having second-hand games, I would be really, really annoyed. But if it went, it's digital only, I'd be annoyed, but not as annoyed. But at the same time, by just saying digital only, 
does actually mean no second-hand gains, but you kind of don't hear that because you just hear the digital side of things. So to me, if you were going to stop second-hand games, you'd probably just enforce digital, which does the same anyway, because at the end of the day, Microsoft wants everyone to go into digital because, one, the actual cost of manufacturing and shipping actual games costs money and they charge about £40 on release. Digital, they charge about £40 on release. So they're making a lot more profit on digital. It's a lot easier for them. And yeah, it just makes more sense. So if he was going to cut out second-hand games, you'd probably force digital. It doesn't sound like they're obviously doing that because the games sound like they're going to be in Blu-ray format. So, it, you know what I mean? It don't make sense. So the idea of second-hand games to me being stopped, I think that's too. Lucky now I've got something else to talk about Nintendo, but it's actually bad and I've already bashed Nintendo, so I'll save that for next week. And just to wrap it up now is Ubisoft. Now, Ubisoft is a company that I like because to me they didn't do anything wrong. Um, you've got companies like EA that are and um, I'm sorry that I've not got much EA news lately, but it's been bigger things to talk about, but I'll make sure we get some EA news. And anyway, Ubisoft. Um, they tend to do everything pretty good by my book, and over lately they did that thing where they went, well, Far Cry, you can't have that digital content, it's going to go to Sony only, and I was like, I don't like you doing that, but as you were and then they've done something now where they've just gone right Assassin's Creed 4 is already in the works like yeah Assassin's Creed 3's just come out and I did one and two and then you start making all the other ones and I was like you know what I, I stepped back from it I didn't want to do it then Assassin's Creed 3 come out and I went that looks good might jump back on the franchise and now you're like boom 4's in the works I'm like oh you've done it again I don't want to play Assassin's Creed thank you I'm talking when they did Far Cry 2 then there was a massive gap and then Far Cry 3 came out and 2 I really enjoyed and 3 I really enjoyed. And I'm like, I'm not even thinking about, that's the thing about the Far Cry's, it never makes me think, oh, I can't wait for the next one. I kind of just forget about it and then it turns up and I'm like, amazing. And now they've turned around and says, don't worry for everyone who wants to have a Far Cry 4, you've not got to wait five years. What? <laughs> I want to wait five years. I want to wait that length of time for it to die down, for you to actually put time and resource and just uh, make a beautiful game. But it sounds like they're turning into a bit of a bang them games out workshop mill. And I'm just like, no, stop making them so fast. And it's just upset me. So Ubisoft is slightly damaging that pristine name that I had for them. And now that obviously when they actually created also Rayman, which was going to be for a Wii U exclusive, and now it's actually going, no, we're going to have it on the PlayStation and the Xbox. Okay, I can kind of understand that decision to put it on all in fact I prefer you to put it on all but when you kind of said it was an exclusive then people might have brought that console just thinking that was the only way they could play Rayman and then you're like no it's going to everyone and then even though the Rayman is ready for the Wii U you go well we'll release them all at the same time you're like no no no, you said you was going to do this, and then you change your mind, and then not only did you change your mind, you said no one can have the game at all until everyone gets it, and I'm just like, it feels like you really are just, everyone's in it for the money, but Ubisoft feel like they're actually showing a bit more of the money colours like EA do, and it, it's it's upset me. So Ubisoft, don't don't damage yourself, please don't, because you're only one of the few that I actually do enjoy. So I'm going to leave it there because I've actually I'm, I'm look I keep if I have if you ever catch me looking to the left it's where my notes are and my notes have got loads of little things and I'm looking and it's 29 minutes of footage at the moment so I'm not going to be able to talk about half that stuff I'm going to have to cut it down and chuck it out next week so I'm going to love you and leave you but before I do I'm going to enjoy this Atkins milkshake and right, so that leaves us then with the question of the week which is at the actual E I keep saying the E3 conference at the Sony meeting I don't know why it's called a meeting sound a bit square and <laughs> what I was saying to the lads is like wouldn't it be great if this game was shown and um, it's just I'm going to put this out as a question of the week and that is what original old school PlayStation like one era game would you like them to see recreated in PlayStation 4 graphics I'm not saying just like a HD release that they tend to do I'm saying like obviously just a new game completely but from the PlayStation 1 days and to me as soon as I said it everyone kind of agreed and it had to be Destruction Derby if I was watching that conference and I went and here is Destruction Derby ready for the PlayStation 4 I would have gone I'm going to have to buy one I'm afraid and that could have sold me the console not that I'm saying it, it did but you know what I mean that's the game I would have loved to see so what old PlayStation 1 game would you have loved to see put on the actual PlayStation 4. So that's me done, guys. Um, fingers crossed there's going to be no more delays with videos. Building work is still going on, but what I'm going to tend to do is like obviously Saturday and Sunday are coming up, and I'm going to try and get a lot of filming done and then space the videos out. So I'm going to try and work out obviously when there's disruption and when there's non disruption and try and get the videos around that. So that's been done and dusted. <coughs> that's my two cents on Sony, and 
I hope you have a great weekend and thank you very much for watching. Cheers, guys. Bye.